Alright, so a friend asked me to do some tutorials on uh, image editing, so uh, let's go ahead and do that. The program that I use is called Paint.net uh, because it's free. So the first thing that you want to do is get the program. And um, the easiest way of doing that is by Googling it, Paint.net. Uh, and you want to go to GetPaint.net. Alright, free software digital photo imaging. You go ahead and click on the download button. Um, you download from the main server. Free link. And you just save that into your computer and install the program. Now um, I'm gonna uh, give you a series of tutorials. Uh, the first one, let's talk about how to add color to a black and white photo. So you, of course, want to run the program first. Let's do that. Um, image software paint.net and I don't really have any black and white uh, photographs right now that I haven't done so let's just go ahead and find one online iconic black and white photo. And let's uh, see, let's go with uh, a relatively easy one, one that doesn't have a lot of detail. To start off, let's start with, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm leaning towards this guy. And what we're going to be going for is something like this uh, sort of effect. Um, I know there's one of Einstein like sticking out his tongue. Let's see if we can find that one. Um, Let's just go that black and white photo Einstein. There we go. Let's just go ahead and do that one. Save. All right. And you want to open your photograph in the paint program. And there are many ways of doing this uh, with uh, different results. Some people use. Um, the select tool and recolor and so on. I'm just going to show you the easiest way of doing that. So first thing you want to do is add a layer on top of it. Um, next thing you want to do is select a skin color. Um, so let's just go ahead and choose this one. You can really use any skin color. I'm going to go ahead and give him like a greenish hair. Um, what you want to do is basically paint over the picture and, and that's easy enough. Let's use a larger brush. Now this should get us enough space. Now that's a little bit too big. Let's use a slightly smaller one. Uh, 70. Yeah, that should do it. Right, so you just go ahead and paint over the picture. Paint over your image. Alright, and we know that he had white hair, but let's go ahead and give him like green hair, because why not? Need a smaller brush for the hair. And you don't really need to be exact with the areas that you're painting. Um, you just need to make it, you know, just kind of good enough because the program, when you set the transparency and the blur effect, the program itself will kind of realign or readjust. Right, so we do that and then we go back to the skin. Right, and what you don't want to do really is color over things that are white by default so you, you don't want to cover the eyes unless it's with the actual color white so let's go ahead and do that for like the beard let's give him like a white beard uh, a mustache a white mustache there we go we just keep painting on the skin
color there. Let's make his tongue like bright red. The reason that you want to use uh, maybe bright colors for the skin, maybe you want to use a slightly darker shade, it's because when you set the layer, the color layer, on top of the image layer, the sister the system will kind of make the colors a little bit more dull. So you want to go ahead and make something that pretty much looks like a, a kid's cartoon, really. Right, so just paint around the tongue. Right, and there we have the face. Um, I'm not really sure what color that background is, but let's just go ahead and make it yellow, because why not? When I say I don't know what color the background is, it's, I mean, I don't know what color it was in the original photograph. So, yellow works. Right, and there we see the suit. Let's make this brush a little bit smaller. And there we see the suit and what appears to be like, um, I don't know, an overcoat. So let's go ahead and make the suit um, blue and the, co the overcoat like purple, just you know, bright colors or whatever. Of course, when you're doing this in your picture, you want to use whatever colors you remember from your original setting. Maybe you want to use... Um, you know, the colors that you would like. I'm just going with these colors because, you know, it's, it's, let's just have a little bit of fun. Why not? Alright, so there we go. That's the purple part. And now for the light blue part. And what we see is that we've created a, a crazy sort of painting that somewhat resembles the original but of course it doesn't. It's like a very childish kind of low quality sort of thing. Let's just make the tie, what color is it? Let's just make the tie orange. All right, let's make this part orange. Right. Uh, if you compare the layer that we've created, let's finish up here. If you compare the layer that we've created versus the original, you'll see that it looks like a kit traced over it, right? So now what you want to do is you want to go to the layer properties of the one that we've just made you want to lower the transparency a little bit maybe to a hundred usually works for me and you click on the overlay button I found that the overlay usually has the best effect when it comes to real images All right. and of course if you want to play with the transparency a little bit more you can do that maybe you want the colors to kind of pop out a little bit more so you give it a little bit less transparency maybe you want the colors to kind of pop out a little bit less you give it less transparency what I've found is that usually between 100 and 150 works best so I'm gonna go ahead with 125 right. now that you're here you can play around with the edges um, you know if you want to add a little bit more green to the top of the hair, you can do that. Like so, etc. Um, but the cool part is that if you add a little bit of a blur here in effects, blur to that layer, um, the colors kind of melt together depending on 
how much radius you set to the blur, etc. See here, let's add a little bit of radius. That I think looks a little bit better than this, right? Um, if you don't have any sort of blur, you see that here the green just kind of cuts into the skin. If you add a little bit of blur, you see that the colors just kind of fit better. Um, there's a better transition between you know the hair, the skin, etc. But you don't want to go all out with the blurs because that's just going to mess up the entire image, right? Um, so let's just leave that blur at a nice 25. Um, and then of course you can play with different styles of blurring. Here I used Gaussian because uh, why not? Um, but you can use, for example, fragmented blur. You can use all different types of blur, and the effect is going to be pretty much the same. It just depends on um, what options you want to play with. So let's just go ahead and use Gaussian. Set this to 25. And there we have um, recolored or set color to a black and white image. All right, so I hope you learned something and I will see you um, on the next. Uh, actually, not yet. Let me show you some of the work that I've already done um, doing this. Let's see. All right, so here's one that I did for a friend of mine. This is what the original photo looked like. And let me find the restored version. There we go. And this is what the recolored version looked like and this one I didn't use a lot of blurring um, because I just didn't feel like it right it's like I felt it was good enough like that um, and then I used another option that I'll talk about in a little bit and this one's pretty much the same color scheme except that instead of using overlay I used darken right. that gives it a, little, a bit of a I think more surreal sort of quality um, when it comes to realism, I prefer overlay. I feel it looks nicer. So that was one of the pictures that I've done. And another one that I did was an old family photo that my mom sent me. That would be the original. This would be the recolored version. All right. So there you go. We'll see you on the next video.